Today I will show you how to do downward facing dog or Dabukashvanasana. This is one of the basic yoga posture and is uh, maybe maybe even the most popular uh, yoga posture in the contemporary yoga. Uh, so most probably you're familiar with that posture, but even though I recommend that you watch this video, just to make sure that you're doing it correctly. We will start from tabletop pose or four O. Middle fingers will be pointing forward and the palms will be shoulder width apart, exactly under the shoulders. Knees are hip width apart under the hips. Taking the toes under. We will lift the knees and we will push the chest toward the knee. Keeping the knees bent making a straight line with the arms and the back. For your first dog, keep the knees bent. Focus on the straight line between the arms and your spine. Now, something uh, very important and I personally find it the most difficult are the shoulders in Bowen Dog. Many people do this common mistake, squeezing the ears with the shoulders, try to push the head down. You don't want to do this. You want to keep the shoulders externally rotating away from the ears. What does it mean? It means that when the elbows want to touch each other, and when they want to go to the, to the ground, this is when it happens, this external rotation in the shoulder. So let's try to do this. We will try to do the wrong squeeze in the ears and then push the shoulders away. Keeping the shoulder blades down. Protraction. Protracting the shoulder blades, drawing them down and forward towards the chest, spreading them away from each other, creating big space in the upper section of the back. Now, uh, another thing that you should bring your focus, also very important, is the internal rotation of the forearm. This means that if we are externally rotating the shoulders, but at the same time we are internally rotating the forearm, this means that the whole palm will be on the ground all the time. So let's check this from the front side. What that happens very often, that we are internally rotating the shoulders. Okay, now we know we will rotate them externally, but that's what happens that sometimes we lift those, those fingers, we lift the thumb and we lift the index because the forearm is following that external rotation. Instead, you rotate internally so the whole palm will be on the ground, spreading the fingers. Middle finger is pointing forward. This will take some practice. So keep on keep on trying. And the other thing that we should bring the focus to is the exact position of the palm and the shoulder. Traditionally we point the middle fingers forward. However, some people have very tight shoulders and for them it would be more convenient to point index finger forward and even to keep the palms a little bit more wider than the shoulders. You can try for yourself what works better for you and then you will know either the index finger or even the middle finger forward. So the tricky part here is that even if it sounds awkward to you, the position of a single finger can change the position of your spine because the body is a system. So, if you don't have stable and correct position from your palms, then uh, not only you can enjoy yourself, but you don't have any benefit from the posture because then the position of your spine is correct and then in that case it's not very good to do yoga. So, it's very important to do it correct. Whole palm on the ground, middle fingers pointing forward. Under the shoulders, 
or make this life a little more open, try this for yourself, or stick to the traditional way. Okay, so once we have the correct position of the palm, of the arms, elbows, yes, the elbows will be pushing towards each other, don't forget. Shoulders away from the ears, straight spine. Now we can try to extend the legs and step the heels on the ground. What happens here very often, sometimes people um, can place the heels on the ground but then they round the spine because the, the hamstring or the calf muscle are tight. So if this is the case with you, make sure that your spine is straight and that the arms are extended of the spine and then push the heels towards the ground. Also, the position here may vary because of people have different body proportion and also different tensional patterns. Maybe you want to step a little bit forward for your dog. Or maybe you want to step a little bit backwards. It doesn't even depend only on the length of your limbs. It's also because uh, if you step forward or back, then the focus is on different parts of the back side of the hips. So once we are able to place the heels on the ground, if you want to make it more challenging, you can lift the toes. Then you get even more stretch on the back side of the legs. We have also option with the feet together, which is called mountain pose in uh, many styles of yoga. In traditional hatha, some schools call it mountain pose. Ashwatanasana. And if this is too difficult to keep the, the feet hip with the paddle together, then you can even open them on the both edges of the mat. You can also do that with the palms. If your shoulders are so stiff that you cannot keep your arms straight, then you just open them more, creating the space for shoulders. Sometimes people have so stiff shoulders that they cannot keep the arms straight and they always run in the spine. In that case, try to place the pinkies on the outer edges of the mat. I personally did this for a very long time. I was eventually able to do it with uh, palms shouldering apart. Now, there are so many details in that posture, so even if it's a beginner pose, it actually has uh, a lot of variations even for advanced yogis. And uh, if this is difficult for you, all this, what I say about correct alignment of the arms, and legs and the whole body. If this is difficult, we will work on the puppy dog pose. Starting from the table dog pose, we will keep the hips and the knees in line. We will walk on the palms forward. And we drop the forehead on the ground. In that position, we can work on the alignment for the big dog. Middle finger is facing forward or just do the alignment that suits for you. And uh, now is the moment when you can work on the correct position of the shoulder. Keep the shoulder blades down, away from each other, towards the chest, protracting. And imagine that the elbows want to touch each other. If you're not sure that you can make the external rotation in that one position, you can work it with elbows on the ground and try to push the elbows down. This is the external rotation when the elbows are on the ground. Something like this we will do in the down dog, but the arms will be extension of the spine. So let's try this one more time. Now with the position of the palms, you can choose either the classic way, middle fingers facing forward, or index facing forward, or even the pinkies will be on the both edges of the mat according to the tensional pattern of your body, according to what your shoulders allow you to do. We will tuck the toes and lift the hips, pushing the heels on the ground. Now, after we are in that position, 
transition, let's focus on some more details. Ideally here, you lift your knee cut. This happens naturally when you contract your quadriceps. The front side of your hips, the hip flexors. And uh, now you again have something controversial. It's the position of the tailbone. According to some school, again, the tailbone will be reaching toward the ceiling. But according to another school, the tailbone will be uh, neutral. So, uh, my opinion, of my experience, I can tell you that uh, if you're not very flexible, you will do this energetical action. You will notice that your tailbone is pointing towards the ceiling. However, if you are very flexible, and you do this, then you will create back bend in your lower back, which we want to avoid because this position is a forward bend. Forward bend we can leverage using the palms around the ground and this is our leverage, but this is still forward bend. Also, very controversial in some yoga school, they say that the goal of this posture is to reach with the head towards the ground. But they will push, 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 and then the head goes down, then the goal is a quad. However, in that posture, uh, there is no such a goal well, if we talk about the healthy way of performing it. Now, if it's uh, for a yoga competition, yes, they do this, they want to place the head on the ground, but most of the schools, uh, they don't implement the classical bell and rock is arms lying with the spine and the spine is close to its natural position because this is not the back bend. Uh, and I would recommend that if you have really open shoulders, the, the head wants to go to the ground, you, if you want an extensive, uh, an intensive back bend, then you should do some of the numerous yoga asanas. There's so many awesome back bends. Uh, however, it's up on you. Just be careful, listen to your body. And I just want to compare the, the things in some different styles of yoga because the names of one posture can vary in the general even uh, the alignment. So I want to make that clear so you don't get confused. Okay, so we have our dog. You will be grounded from the feet, hips will be on the ground. You can lift the toes if this is too easy. Kneecaps will be lifted. Then we have straight spine, externally rotating the shoulders, internally rotating the forearm, whole palm on the ground, fingers spread. Now, what we need to work here is the drishti gazing from either you will be looking at the big toes or you will be looking at your navel. In Ashtanga Yoga, this posture is performed with Uddiyama Bandha, drawing the belly in and keeping it like this for five breaths traditionally. And then the Drishti is to the navel. If there is any neck issues, however, just allow the head to be there, hang it naturally. Also, if you are a beginner in yoga, don't try to perform this with the Bandha. Instead, just focus on breathing deeply, abdominal or full yogi breath, which is very important for the beginning of your practice. Now, for this, the down facing dog, for the Mukha Svanasana, I hope it was helpful for you.